There are those that just want to be left alone, and those that just won't leave them alone. Which one are you? The Ernest Hancock Show. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence of Me, Ernest Hancock, and Mish, M-I-S-H. You just Google Mish, boom, all over the place. Mish Shedlock, he's, uh, he's, he's been helping us out for years, understand a lot of what's going on, and the boy be right uh, a whole bunch of times. So we want to make sure that we go to him and we want to understand on a world scale the economy and how it's going to affect you and me. It's mo- mostly you I'm worried about me. So what we're going to do is I want to talk about Europe. Europe is it's, it keeps coming back in the news, back in the news, back in the news. Greece is complaining and saying and the people are up in arms saying, oh, austerity, austerity. We want you. We don't want you to stop spending all that free money on us. And uh, yeah, people go, oh, you want us to give you money? You, you, you crack addict? Well, guess what? Uh, stop doing crack, okay? And then we'll, we'll give you some money. Well, they gave you some money. Now they want more money. You know, we, we, so I'm just... When does it stop? How much of an impact does this have on Europe, the European Union, the Euro, and is Greece the last one to come with their hand out? And when does it get really bad? And then what's the U.S. going to do about it? Mish, tell me everything. Oh, my gosh. There's a lot of questions there. Um, uh, Well, Greece is back in the news, as is Portugal and Ireland, of course. You know, if they lower the terms for Greece, then then Portugal and Ireland are going to want their terms lower too. So far, the EU is saying no. We, you know, we're not going to lower your terms, Ireland. Well, you know, I'm waiting for for the Irish citizens to take matters in their own hand, just as happened in Iceland, where they put this thing to a vote and the people said, "Screw you!" You know, we're not paying back these the, these debts. And Iceland's in full recovery now. Iceland's doing fine. They I mean, keep you know, coming back with the vote. It doesn't go one. They'll do it again and again and again. And then all well, of a they sudden... Did. They actually they, they put that to a vote three times. But but I think this last time, you know, that, that that's it. I, you know, uh, keeps getting closer, though. dumb enough to bring this to a vote a second time or a third time, it's probably going to be voted out of office. I don't, I don't know how it didn't happen already. But in Greece, we've got a little bit different of a situation. G- Greece was stupid enough to uh, uh, load up its own pension funds with its own government bonds. So if there's a haircut on those government bonds, guess what that does? That wipes out the pensions of all these, you know, farmers and, and hairdressers. I mean, everyone gets a pension in Greece. It, it literally wiped them all out. So, I mean, this is, this is why the Greek prime minister is, is adamant, saying, oh, no, you know, no, you know, you know we're, you know, we're going to pay these loans back. Well, the stock market knows, uh, uh, excuse me, the bond market knows that that, that, that's pure idiocy. You you don't have two-year interest rates at 25%. If uh, uh, when the rest of when when Germany is at uh, something like two percent, uh, to look it up actually, the, the uh, uh, you don't have you know that much of a difference if if the if the government bonds of Greece and the government bonds of of uh, Germany are you know that widely different by you know by more than twenty percent. I mean that's that's just. Uh, more than 20 percentage points. Uh, that's just absolutely ridiculous. And and the big one's going to happen when Spain blows. And, you know, I just did a blog right before we came on the air. That's what I was working on. You know, uh, I've got a guy in the name of Bran. He lives in Spain, and he sends me stuff from Spain all the time, you know, talking about, you know, what the real unemployment rate is there. Well, the, officially it's 20%, and apparently real, it's, it's, it's even higher than that. You know, they play the same games like we do here, although not as bad. Anyway, so the EU wants, wants Spain to... to uh, pay back its loans by being more austere. You know uh, how does uh, that's not going to help Spain. It's not going to help Greece. It, you know even Pimco's coming out right now. Uh, actually, there was an article in Pimco today where uh, Gross said, you know, this is it. You know the the Greece can can no longer be kicked down the road. It's they're going to have to start talking about haircuts on those bonds. And when that happens, we're going to see massive protests in, in, in Greece. And, but who's affected by this? First off, let, let's, let's look at it from a different standpoint. Who really benefited from the bailouts? It, it wasn't Greece that benefited from the bailout. It wasn't Ireland the, that benefited from the bailouts. You know, there was no bailout of Ireland. There was no bailout of Portugal. 
what, what, what the EU loaned money to Greece, Ireland, and Portugal so that Greece, Ireland, and Portugal could pay back the bondholders. Who are the bondholders? Banks! The French and German and U.K. banks, and to a, a fourth extent, the U.S. banks. That's who made these dumb loans, but, but pr- predominantly uh, uh, U.K., German, and French in that order. Uh, so, you know, what they're doing is robbing the taxpayers of, of Greece, and, and one can make a case that those Greek taxpayers ought to be robbed because their, their uh, pension benefits are absurd, but s- certainly one can't make that same claim uh, uh, for, the, for the citizens of Ireland who had nothing to do with this, you know, and to the, the same degree for, for Portugal. So they're robbing the taxpayers of these countries to pay back the French, German, and UK banks. They're enslaving them. They're putting a debt on them. And how is it that they're, I mean, they put, you know, we made up this piece of paper that says that you owe us, you know, fork it over. Right. All right. That's what it is. We owe you. And, and, and the people are going to what? We put that in our, our deposit and we mark that at full value as if we're going to be paid back. Well, we're not. They're not going to be paid back. Well, they're going to, try, so how does this work? They go and say, you know, well, this piece of paper that says you owe us and you're going to pay it back and we're going to give it full value is based on the concept that some politician raised taxes or did what? I mean, I don't understand how that equates into any real expectation that the people across Europe are going to be able to afford to pay this back. Well, they can, but the, the problem is the politicians don't see it. Look, you know, uh, uh, Central Bank, ECB President uh, Jean-Claude Trichet keeps saying, you know, uh, this is you know, not in the cards. He's, you know, a default is not in the cards. Or a redistribution, a recalculation, you know, this and that. Default and so is they came inevitable. Up with a new word today. I, I'm trying to remember it, but uh, uh, they, they, you know, it's like uh, they, they coined a new word today for default. And I apologize for not being able to think of the name of it. So we're going to do this, you know, not restructuring, but re something or other. It's the same. It's just another word for default, and that, that's revaluing. What we know. <laughs> and and it's going to hit. Who's it going to hit? It's going to hit the banks. And if it hits the banks, what's that going to mean? It's going to mean they're undercapitalized. That means they're not going to be able to lend. It means if they're the going to go to Congress. Lend, what does that do to credit? You know, so, so this gets back to my central thesis of why understanding credit is so important and people keep ignoring it. People okay. keep ignoring credit, and that is the number one important thing. Okay, I, w- I want to I get this in before we're done. The federal employee pensions that Geithner is talking about, they, I heck, he's already taking them or putting them on. It's like, <laughs> it's like they had the Social Security. It's your trust fund. You know, it's, it's, it's your little file cabinet that's over here. It's just for you. We're not going to touch it. You know, trust us. <laughs> and then they spend it all in the general fund, and it's not there. Okay, so it's gone. Right. Well, they're doing the same thing to the pension fund that was separate from that for federal employees. They're taking this. This is how you had people in the streets and in Europe going, hey, 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 man, you took all our goodies or you're not giving us goodies or you're not going to take care of us or whatever you pinky swear, promised that if we supported your communist uh, regime, whatever, that you're going to take. Now you're not, you fibbers. So I'm looking at what they're doing with the federal pensions. Is there any expectation that they'll ever pay that back or are they just robbing them too? No, there's there's a complete expectation they'll pay that back. Remember that you know we're we're talking about here With? A, a a game. You know that you know whether or not the debt ceiling will be raised. You know, unless I'm you know wildly wrong here, and actually I hope I'm wildly wrong. You know, I, I would say the odds are something like you know ninety nine percent. If not higher, that they're going to raise the debt ceiling. So, so, but the game going on in Congress right now is is that um, uh, the Republicans want to cut spending and the Democrats want to raise taxes. And so the Republicans are saying, "Well, uh, we're not going to raise the debt ceiling uh, unless the EU uh, cuts spending." And the and the Democrats, meanwhile, say, "Well, okay, you know." It's, so there's this big game of chicken. No, going I on understand there. that, but they it goes back to October. 
So this is just a It goes game. back to so your didn't point. Pay, you know, so Guy, so let me finish here. Geithner didn't pay those two pension plans, but, you know, as soon as they hike the debt limit, they'll pay them. So they'll pay them with phony no, money, absolutely. of course. Exactly my point. Of course they'll shift the, the, the <laughs> debt from we owe you uh, to the taxpayer that paid back the federal employees. I get it, but we're still on the hook. We're never getting off the hook. Until We're still the on the hook for Fannie Mae to the tune of four hundred billion dollars and rising. You know, uh, they, we need to end it. We need to uh, here. Let's end on this note. We need to elect Ron Paul or someone like him. That, that uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the information that detail the real news between the lines of propaganda about government policies and the true relationship we all have with coercive governments. Learn the true condition of our economy, innovations and technological breakthroughs in energy, health, computer science, and space travel. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media, the media that is so last century. Corporate media has evolved into nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but we now have a fantastic alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com provides constant news updates on the issues that affect our lives in the most important ways. Our liberty and our property are under constant attack, and FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda while encouraging the participation of our readers. Join us at FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com, where the revolution between the ears has already matured.